Welcome, my friends, to the Bob and Brad podcast. My name is Mike Keenitz, and today I am interviewing Rachel Cosgrove, who is the author of the book Age Strong, A Woman's Guide to Feeling Athletic and Fit After 40. We are going to talk about the book in general and the importance of resistance training, especially for the female population as they age. So without further ado, here is Rachel. Welcome to the program, Rachel Cosgrove. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So today we are talking about your book you have written called Age Strong, A Woman's Guide to Feeling Athletic and Fit After 40. Now, I do uh, practice many of these things besides being over 40 and being a woman, but we're going to talk about resistance training today. Yes, that's definitely a big part of the book. So here's a copy of the book. Um, excited to talk about it. So. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your background? Absolutely. So I actually come from a background way, way back uh, of dancing that got in, me into exercise and got me into you know aerobics training and then finally landed on strength training as really what I, what I fell in love with as far as helping me to look and feel the way that I wanted to and then help my clients to look and feel the way that they wanted to as a personal trainer. So I got my degree in exercise physiology and I have been in a career of uh, being a fitness professional for, gosh, it's been like 30 years now. Um, so I've been doing this a long time. And so I've been working with a lot of women. And over that time, you know, when I first started, I was in my 20s. And I had a lot of clients in their 40s. And of course, they would tell me, you just wait till you're in your 40s. And then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see it's a lot harder. And so um, now that I am in my 40s, it's pretty funny, because we've had our gym for 25 years. And so a lot of the clients that I've been working with since I was 20 and 25, um, are still our clients. So now I I'm in my 40s. They're in their 60s. And so it's pretty, you know, I'm like, hey, guys, so now I'm in my 40s. So let's talk. And so that's really um, where the book came out of. It was kind of, you know, really, I want to say a selfish reason. I wanted to really sit down with all of them and go, hey, remember back when I was in my 20s and you were saying that, you know, what, what it was going to be like when I was in my 40s? Well, let's talk now, now that you're, you know, you've made your way through perimenopause, menopause. We've, you know, really helped you to continue to stay strong, fit. Because I've seen so many of these women reach their peak health and fitness in their 50s and 60s. And um, so they're inspiration for me. And so um, really writing this book was about, you know, sitting down and really going, okay, over the time that I've been working with all of these women over the years, I've worked with client after client and seen what works, you know, let's sit down and not only, you know, talking about the research and what's been proven to work, but let me actually talk to every client that we have had the opportunity to train from being in their 40s to now in their 60s and what worked, what didn't, what, you know, how did it go? And uh, really, you know, making sure that we had not only, you know, the the philosophy and the, the research, but the actual results to show for it. And so that's really wanted to, what I wanted to share in the book is um, not only the information, but also the inspiration that came with a lot of the stories from a lot of our clients. So do they tell you now, wait till you're in your 60s? <laughs> they sure do. Yep. <laughs> They're like, wait till you're in your 60s. It's going to be yeah. even harder. I'm like, okay, okay. So you just tell them that's when the next yeah. book comes out then or exactly. what? Exactly. Yeah. They they keep, yeah, of course, you know, I come out with this book and they all say, well, what about a book for us in our 60s? And I'm like, I'm not there yet. <laughs> so, so where can people find your book online? Uh, they can find it on Amazon or anywhere that books are sold. So, okay. um, and then Human Kinetics is my publisher. So you can always go straight to Human Kinetics where um, you can purchase it straight from them. Do you have a separate website at all you'd like to mention? So I have my own website, rachelcosgrove.com. Uh, I'm also very active on Instagram, which uh, rachelcosgrove.co. So if you want to follow me there, if you're interested in staying connected with me and hearing what I'm up to lately, then uh, that'd be a good place to connect. Sure. So we're going to get into some more questions here. First, we're going to kind of talk about resistance training and it's important as we age. So why is it important as we age, especially for people over 40? I should say women. I guess it pertains to anyone, but we're talking about women here today. It really does. And I, I think really why um, women specifically, because I think so many women, as they do enter into their 40s, they're on one of two paths. They're on the path of they, they you know, don't start 
strength training. They don't start to um, take control of their health, of their fitness, of, you know, building strength, building bone, building all of the things that are going to help them to age strong. Uh, and so they end up on a path of it's a slippery slope, you know, a slippery slope of losing muscle, gaining fat, um, losing their, you know, functional, being able to function, being able to do the things in life that they want to be able to do. And so that's where over time, you know, you can find yourself getting injured more often, having more disease, having more issues as you start to get older and really losing your independence. And so that's the road I really want to keep most women on off of. And so I think a lot of women think, you know, when they think, okay, I need to do something. They th first thing they think is I'm going to start walking. And that, that's a very common thing is I'll just start walking and walking's great. And I have nothing against walking. It's a great form of activity and a way to live an active, healthy lifestyle. Um, but it's missing out on a lot of the benefits that you will get from doing a strength training program. And so really encouraging women to embrace strength training as the cornerstone of helping you to age strong. And so the other path that I really want to help most women to end up landing on is learning how to feel confident in the gym, how to lift weights, how to, how to be able to gain strength as you're getting older. And, you know, every like as you're putting on muscle, you're building your metabolism, you're, you know, going to help, it's going to help you get through perimenopause, menopause, your hormones are going to be more stable. Um, and you're going to feel more confident and empowered to be able to do everything in life. And so it's really about realizing what you can do as you age, rather than starting to have the dialogue of, oh, I can't, I'm too old. And so that's, you know, really where, especially for women, because they do tend to kind of go to walking or not lifting weights because, you know, oh, I'm too old or, you know, I'm a woman. And uh, so they'll, they'll instead stick with more cardio based training, where they won't get the benefits of building muscle, building bone mass, uh, you know, really, even the hormonal benefits of, you know, increasing gr growth hormone, and really, um, all the things that are going to help you to age strong. Yeah. So when it comes to lifting weight specifically, how does that compare to cardio? I realize they're both beneficial. Personally, I do both, but I realize they're similar, but different. Sure. Yeah. So um, definitely both are important and it is, uh, you know, good to work on your cardiovascular health, of course, uh, with strength training, you're, so not only are we going to, so what, what the kind of programming that you'll see in the book age strong does uh, include short rest periods. So you are going to get some of that cardiovascular benefits. So that's the cool part is that with a, a strength training program that's designed properly, you actually can get a lot done in, you know, your workout. And so I'm not saying that you don't have to do any cardiovascular activity, but you can get it, you can get, you know, really the benefits of improving your cardiovascular health through a full body strength training program with short rest periods, uh, you know, where you're getting your heart rate elevated. And, and in addition to that, if you are lifting weights, so putting a demand on your body that it's not used to, um, that's where you're going to stress your body and you're going to end up after you recover, gaining muscle, gaining strength. And that's where you're really going to see the benefits is by gaining that muscle, gaining that strength and uh, seeing the difference in what you're able to do. So, you know, a lot of the women in our gym, what we find, you know, they, they start off and maybe they're, you know, unable to, um, like one of the women, I tell the story in the book of she, her trigger, her reason that she came in was realizing she was about to carry her grandbaby upstairs and felt nervous that she didn't feel confident that she could hold her grandbaby, balance herself and go upstairs. And she couldn't do it because she was unable, you know, not, didn't have the confidence, didn't have the strength, didn't have the balance. And so that's when she decided this is not who I am and I need to go figure out how to get stronger. And so this was, she was in her fifties and she came into our gym and joined our gym and started to strength train with us and, you know, everything from step ups and deadlifts and squats and, you know, uh, to be able to, you know, carry her grandbaby up the stairs with confidence. And so that's the kind of thing that strength training will do for you. It will give you that core strength. It will give you that balance. It will give you that ability to lift your child or your grandbaby or the, you know, the, like she also tells a story of how she used to have to help ask for help at the grocery store to get the water, like the, the tray of water onto her cart. And now she, she's the one that's, you know, offering to help people. She's like, Hey, do you need help with that? And ends up <laughs> helping people with their stuff. So being able to do the things that you want to be able to do as you age. So I think building muscle and building that strength, um, is the key, you know, with that. In addition, it does increase your metabolism. So that does help you to, also keep a healthy body composition as well as you age. 
Yeah, typically, I mean, there's lots of studies looking at the more muscle mass you have. Typically, the more overall quality of life you're going to have as you age when it comes to prevention of disease, osteoporosis, and different things like that. So, Absolutely. Yep. So what are some common myths you hear about females in strength training? Uh, well, the most common, of course, is I'm going to get big and bulky. And, you know, a lot of women still have that fear that, you know, if I start lifting weights, I'm going to start to look like a man. And uh, it's just, you know, something that I understand the fear. I understand, you know, that you maybe, you know, you're afraid that you are going to sprout big muscles and, you know, start to look like the Hulk. Uh, but it doesn't happen that way. Um, and so really for women, a lot of women have been on, you know, countless crash diets. They've actually lost a lot of muscle mass over time. Um, if they are aging, they are going to start to atrophy and start to lose muscle. So realizing that instead of being afraid of getting bulky, you actually want to be afraid of not building muscle. Um, it's actually the opposite. So, you know, if you aren't afraid of of atrophy, if you aren't afraid of getting weaker, if you aren't afraid of like, those are the things you need to start to shift your mindset of. And, and every pound of muscle you can gain is going to be a good thing for you as you age. And that muscle is not going to look like a man. I mean, we, as a woman, you know, we are, we are women and we have certain hormones and, you know, our bodies are really made up the way they are. Um, we can continue to get strong and still remain feminine and look the way we want to look. Um, and I'm, it's exciting to me that more and more women are embracing muscle and are embracing strength and are not afraid to, you know, be strong. And I think um, that's something that realizing you can be feminine and strong and, you know, independent and be able to, you know, do the things you want to be able to do. Yeah. I've, I've met females like that, that are, <laughs> I don't want to do, I don't want to do weights. Some of them will do bands though. They're okay with the bands, but the weights and I'm like, yeah, but I'm bands, like, I mean, it's a limit to the bands, right? So yeah. Like you can only like your body's going to get used to it. And then what, you know, yeah. you, know you can use a stronger band, but there's only, there's a limit. There's still going to be a limit to that. Yeah. So I, a, there's a point where you got to start to just, you know, lift, lift the iron and embrace it. Yeah. Most of these, uh, very strong ladies and that are super muscular you see on Instagram, um, are exogenously enhanced by the way. So <laughs> if people Usually. are worried, that takes a lot of, uh, other resources and lots of lifting. So don't be yeah. afraid. Uh, yeah. And it's so, I mean, it's always funny to me because I'm like, it, you know, it's such hard work. And like you said, you know, you're going to have other, you know, you're going to have everything dialed in so much from your nutrition to the doctors you're working with to the, like, if you want to try to look like that, it's going to be hard to do. Um, and so realizing it doesn't just happen. Um, yeah. And not being afraid of that. So let's talk about your book a little more. So it's kind of broken down into sections. So can you walk us through the different phases? I'll just kind of mention them. So you have a base phase, a build phase, stronger phase, and age strong phase. Sure. So these are the phases that we take our clients through at Results Fitness. And so at, when you initially start with us, we do take you through a base phase. And that base phase is really, um, you know, looking at improving your posture, looking at getting your body ready for, you know, improving range of motion um, so that you're ready and able to lift heavier weights. So this is initially a higher rep phase. So when we first start, we're on, you know, higher reps, we're going to be doing lower intensity, you're not going to be lifting as heavy of weights, because you're just getting started. So um, we're not going to, you know, start day one with, okay, let's, you know, let's squat, you know, 100 pounds. Um, it's really about getting your body moving, getting the range of motion, um, and getting everything switched on so that you are moving properly. Um, quality movement is one of the number one things we want to make sure we're doing before we start to load your body. So we don't necessarily want to add that external load until we're moving properly. And so that's really what the base phase is about, is getting you moving properly and really getting all of your muscles switched on. And then as you are going through that base phase, which each phase is about four to six weeks, so we recommend you know, your body's going to start to adapt and should have gotten everything you can out of that phase within the four to six week range, um, depending on how, you know, how adaptable you are. Um, but at that point, you want to go ahead and switch it up. And the thing that your body uh, you know, really will, uh, 
will respond to first, so it will get used to first, is the intensity. So that high rep range that a lot of women love, a lot of women think, you know, oh, I'm just going to do high reps, low weights, and that's all I'm going to do. The problem is you will start to get used to it and your body will start to figure it out and our bodies are smart. And so there's a point where your body will go, all right, I got this and you're going to stop changing. And at that point, you know, it's important to change that intensity. So going from that high rep range to a lower rep range in the next phase is what will happen. So if you're following our program, then, uh, you know, now we're going to go ahead. You've been lifting whatever you've been lifting for maybe 15 reps. Now we're going to go ahead and take it down to, let's say, eight reps, six to eight reps. And uh, so now you're going to bump up those weights. Um, now that you're moving properly, we're going to be able to lift more and you're going to be seeing it. Your body's going to feel a difference because your body's not used to that rep range and it's not used to that intensity. And so um, by what, you know, what we call undulating periodization by going from high reps to low reps, and then you'll see that the reps will go back up again in the next phase. And so we're basically tricking your body so it doesn't figure out what we're doing. As you go through those phases, the exercises are also progressing as well. So each phase, you're getting a little bit harder version or you're doing it, you know, a little differently. And so that you're not only changing up the intensity and the reps, but you're also going to be um, changing up your load and then changing up the exercises as well. And so that final phase, so high rep, low rep, high rep, low rep, so that, you know, final phase, you are going to be lifting heavy weights. And we do put you into, um, I do add in there some, what we call, you know, as many reps as you can get, you know, sets. So, and I love doing that because for a lot of women, they won't realize that they're not actually lifting as much as they're capable of lifting. And so as you progress through the program, you'll realize, huh, I've only been lifting 15 pound dumbbells. And I just went to try to get, you know, let's say 10, say, say you're on a, a phase that's 10 reps and you're using 15 pound dumbbells and there's a set that I have you do as many as you can get. And let's say you get 20 reps instead of 10. Well, guess what? Those 15 pound dumbbells weren't heavy enough for that 10 reps. And so that's a way of testing yourself to see, am I actually lifting enough to be you know, putting a stimulus on my body to get the changes that I want to get. And um, so, yeah, so as you go through the phases, you will see that those kind of, um, you know, the reps will be changing, the intensity will be changing, the exercises will be changing, and you'll be testing yourself to making sure that by the time you finish that fourth phase, you're going to be aging strong. You're going to be, you know, really um, pushing yourself in the gym. You're going to be feeling a difference and, you know, your body's going to be noticing that something's different, something's changing. So once I finish your age strong phase, I noticed you had a metabolic interval workouts. Do people typically go right into that or do they kind of start repeating some of the other phases with different weights? So the metabolic workouts are actually interspersed within. So okay. um, I actually have that on the calendar is, you know, you're going to lift weights. So strength training is the cornerstone. That is, you know, the main priority is going to be those strength training programs of those four phases, um, doing those two to three days a week. And then if you have time and if you're able to recover from, you can add in one to two of those metabolic workouts a week as well. So that's basically additional workouts that are more cardio based. So they're um, more high intensity cardio based where you're going to be getting your metabolism up. Um, you're not going to get the muscle building benefit from those workouts uh, that you will from the strength training, but they will still help to burn calories, um, you know, help to get your metabolism up and give you a cardiovascular workout uh, in addition to the strength training workouts. Sure. So typically when people hit the age strong phase, they just kind of go back to the building phase. Is that how it works? Well, ideally they hire a coach and that coach <laughs> continues to, <Sure. laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know, I would love to say that I put, you know, your life's plan into my yeah. book, but, um, there is a point where I do recommend getting a professional, hiring a coach, um, especially if you've worked your way through four phases, you're probably at a point where you do need a professional to take a look at where you're at and help you to take that next step with your strength training program. Sure. No, makes sense. Yeah. Most programs I've ever seen are like depending like eight to 16 weeks to a few months, but yeah, typically they kind of cycle in and out like that. Sure. All right. So we're going to talk about modifications because some people, as we age, we typically have some limitations. So what modifications can be made if say someone has some joint pain or more of a limited mobility? Sure. So, I mean, definitely we do not want to work through pain. That's not who we are. That's not what we do. And so if something is causing pain or if, 
you're feeling like you're unable to do something with full range of motion, uh, usually our first step is going to be to deload that exercise. So how can we take some of the load off? That might be holding on to maybe a TRX or wrapping a band around to take off some of the weight. So if you're, you know, if you're feeling your joints with your body weight, let's say you're doing a lunge and you feel your knees and you're like, oh, my knees don't like this, then I'd probably try out, can we go ahead and have you hold on to something, taking some of your body weight off, and then are you able to do the exercise pain-free? And if so, then, okay, it's really just a matter of loading. It's really just that we're not strong enough yet. And so as we get stronger, you will be able to get to the point where you won't need to hold on to something and you will be able to you know, do that exercise without pain. So it's really figuring out, is it just a strength? You know, is it just that we need to get stronger? And so if that's the case, then you know the programs will actually help you to decrease that pain and to get to the point where you can do the exercises, um, you know, because you'll be strong enough to do them. Uh, you know, in addition, so it's really finding that if you do have a lot of injuries or pain or things that are bothering you, again, I do recommend working with a coach because yes, as it does get more customized and individualized, um, you know, I'd love to say that I could give every different progression and regression in the book, um, but obviously working with each individual person, um, you know, we do look at, okay, what's going on with this person? And if there is a lot of different things that aren't going to fit in within, you know, the 80% of people that will fit into the program that's in the book, um, then you probably want to work with a professional to help you figure out those modifications. But overall, I would say find what range of motion you can do without pain, uh, work that range of motion, deload so that you're able to do as much range of motion as you can. So you're able to do the exercises. And then as you get stronger, you should be able to increase that range of motion and be able to eventually see the progress that you are able to do the exercises. So we talked about the phases and the base phase is really looking at proper technique before adding load. So this kind of pertains to my next question. If someone is new to lifting and they want to make sure they're starting safe, I'm presuming you kind of already built that in with your base phase section, right? We did. Yeah, we um, we really try to set you up for success. And so, um, you know, really giving you a program that should be a good starting point for you. Uh, you know, that's definitely something that I think, you know, and if you're intimidated to go into a gym or maybe you're not feeling like, you know, you're wanting, maybe you want to do it. At, I know a lot of women will want to start at home first, set up a home gym and you can, you know, that base phase, you should be able to do a lot of it in the, in your home gym. Um, but there is a point where you are going to need to venture out and, you know, go into a gym where there's going to be a fully equipped I, although a lot of people have pretty nicely equipped home gyms now. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess uh, could be could work in your home gym as well. So a lot of your exercises when I look through are more functional and functional fitness is rather popular, but some of our audience is kind of the lay person. Do you want to explain what functional movements and fitness is? Sure. So I think um, when you're referring to that, it's really the difference between, you know, a, a functional, like functional movements and then, uh, you know, like bodybuilding or bodybuilding splits. So a lot of um, old school programs you'll see, and I even, you know, I hear a lot of people still coming into our gym that are doing body part splits. So maybe they're doing upper body on one day or they're doing biceps and, you know, um, back on one day and chest and triceps on another day. And, you know, they're doing, you know, quads on one day, um, which is really, that comes from the bodybuilding world. And so when we talk about like for women that are afraid of getting big and bulky, um, that's probably the opposite. Like you don't really want to follow the bodybuilders because that's what they do to get big and bulky. And not only that, but it's really not necessary for the average, you know, for the general population that doesn't have a whole lot of time, that is not going to be spending their life in the gym. Uh, you know, those those programs are really when people are in the gym every single day, multiple times a day, and they, they start splitting up the body parts to be able to do multiple workouts uh, and then really hit each muscle group multiple times, which just is not necessary for uh, the population that I, that I, you know, specialize in that I um, want the book to be written for. And so um, instead of doing those body part splits where you're not going to get, usually with a body part split, you're not going to get the cardiovascular benefits, you know, you're going to have longer rest periods, you're not going to get uh, the full body program. So when you do a full body program, you're actually getting, you know, you're working compound movements that are going to be the most bang for your buck. And so with those compound movements, doing functional movements, like you mentioned, so things like pushing, pulling. So our basic functional movements are, you know, we don't actually talk about any single muscle group because 
every movement we do uses multiple muscle groups. There's not really such a thing as just working the bicep. When we do a bicep curl, our core is going to be working. Our, you know, upper back is going to be working. We are always, you know, your butt's probably even working because you're squeezing it while you're lifting up that dumbbell, right? So it is really hard to, you can't actually isolate a muscle group or isolate. And that's why doing those body part splits really doesn't make sense. So instead, the program is written with more function, thinking about it, the movements. So putting in some pushing movements, some pulling movements, some squatting movements, some bending movements, some rotational movements, uh, balancing movements. So what are the basic movements of the human body? Let's make sure we train all of those basic movements so that as we age, we're able to do all of those things and be able to function, right? Be able to stay independent, be able to bend down and, you know, pick up the, the water or pick up our grandchild, uh, you know, be able to push ourselves up off the floor. Um, you know, I think there's actually been research that, you know, if you're able to get down on the floor and get back up off the floor, you actually will live longer. And so um, functional movements, being able to actually function, you know, get do the things you want to be able to do in life. Yeah. So I noticed in your book, you have primarily body weight stuff, free weights, meaning dumbbells, there's some kettlebells, even at a sandbag. I'm guessing it sounds like you have barbells at your gym though, right? We do. Yeah. And there are a few barbell exercises in there. Sure. Mm -hmm. But in comparison, those type of movements, how do they compare to machines? So sitting on a machine, um, when you're sitting, so I think people probably sit enough. <laughs> so, um, so most of the exercises you will see are standing. We do do some kneeling exercises. We love to use the half kneeling position a lot of times to teach uh, core stability. So when you're in a half kneeling position, really learning how to stabilize the core before you stand on two feet. Uh, so when you are standing on two feet, it is about, you know, really stabilizing your core, using your whole body, um, not sitting with your core switched off and you you know, your, your butt switched off, your legs are switched off. Um, so when you're sitting down on a machine, you're losing so much of the benefit. Um, not only that, but if it's a fixed machine that has a fixed, you know, plane of motion, now you're not going to use any of your stabilizer muscles. You're not going to, you know, be able to use again, you know, core is not going to be working because everything is already in a fixed plane of motion. You don't have to actually stabilize any of the load. So a lot of what we use and what we've found to work is using exercises that the more we have to, you know, make our body work, right? So make our, our everything, make, um, we have to stabilize the, the weight. We have to, you know, be able to really um, manage that weight. And that's why even like the sandbags, those take it another step because they move. So while you're holding a sandbag now, not only are you trying to stabilize a weight, but now the weight is moving, you know, it's, it's got, it's alive. And so that creates an even, you know, further stimulus for your body to have to try to figure out to be able to get stronger from. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, I, I do both, but I'm also kind of a meathead yet. <laughs> I came from a, a, yeah, like a bodybuilder lifting background, got, got kind of burnt down on that. And you also kind of get injured from that too. It's not very yeah. fun. All the yeah. overuse issues, but definitely. Yeah. And it's, well, and a lot of those, a lot of the bodybuilders are on steroids and on, you know, like that's like we were talking about exogenous drugs, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of them do use other things to help them to recover and to help them. So a lot of those programs are based on, you know, people that are, um, that are, they're, they're elite athletes, really. They're, you know, it's an extreme sport bodybuilding, mm -hmm. you know, um, just like, you know, everything like CrossFit's an extreme sport. Like these are extreme sports. So I think sometimes when people jump into these extreme sports thinking that it's their fitness program, that's where you end up injured, you know, because we, we want to build ourselves up to be fit enough. If that is a sport you want to get into then. Okay. But it is, it is really an extreme sport. So I, I do like to mention you have some like, um, cable exercises in your book, but a standing and kneeling cable machine are much different than like a leg press, just clarifying for the audience. Yes. Yeah. So the last couple of questions I have, if someone is new to lifting and kind of intimidated, what advice would you give them to start? So uh, one, follow a program. So, you know, trying to wing it, I think that's one of the fastest ways. Like if you walk into a gym and you don't have a program you're following and you're just kind of wandering around going, I don't know what to do. I mean, that's an easy way to feel like 
unmotivated and, and like, okay, I don't, you know, I don't know what to do and I'm going to go ahead and just quit and this, I'm done. Um, and you're not going to get results. So I think having a program, having, you know, following a program like the one in Age Strong where you know what to do, you have a plan, you, you know, you know, it works, you, you know, it's been proven years over the years, we've done it with multiple clients and you'll read all the stories in the book. So I think that's one of the, the main things is, you know, pick a plan and stick with the plan. Don't try to mix plans either. I think a lot of people, you know, it's like with all of the internet and all the different things they like, oh, I'm going to do, like, I've had people tell me, oh, your book is great. There's some really great exercises in there. Like, they're just like pulling out exercises from my book. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, do the whole <laughs> plan. You know, like, there's a whole method to the madness in there. Like, it's not just cool exercises, you know? So, um, so be careful, like, just picking out you know, the, the cool exercises that you think look like the ones you want to do and stick and really commit to doing the plan and, you know, trust the plan. And even if it does start with the base phase and you're feeling like, oh, this is a little too easy or I'm not sure about this, stick with it because you'll find that by taking the time to go through the base phase, you're going to get yourself with, you're going to have less injuries, you're going to move better, you're going to feel like your range of motion is improving. And that's going to set you up to really be able to continue to you know, progress over the following phases. So pick a plan, trust the plan, stick to the plan, and don't try to add in other stuff to the plan. Uh, and then again, you know, if you are able to, I definitely recommend getting a coach. And whether you work with the coach, you know, remotely or, you know, once a month where they're writing you a program and checking in on your, you know, form with videos or that kind of thing, or if there's someone in person that you can work with that can oversee your programming and really make sure that you're doing everything properly, uh, that helps, right? Because that's if you don't know what you're doing and if you're just getting started in something, I think it's smart to hire an expert who can help you on your path. And, uh, you know, I think that's with exercise, a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to do it on my own. I'm going to figure it out. And they don't, you know, think, why, why wouldn't you hire somebody who knows what they're doing so that they can help you to set yourself up for success? So I know my last question is going to be dictated upon the individual and how much time they have, but in a perfect scenario, how would you make a good routine throughout the week? Maybe what's your weekly routine for lifting and doing other things? So yeah, it is definitely individual. Um, and I'm a morning person. I definitely like, I think working out in the morning, it's most likely to get done. So, you know, definitely committing to when is going to be the time that you're not going to have any excuses come into play. Uh, you know, we have a lot of, you know, school teachers that'll put their clothes in the car and they come straight after school, like literally come in and change their clothes. And, you know, it's like they aren't allowed to go home first. Um, so figure out what works for you, like as far as setting yourself up so that, because, you know, we all have good intentions, like when we go to bed at night and thinking, oh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up and work out. How can you really make sure that you're going to get up and work out? You know, put your clothes out, uh, commit to yourself that, you know, maybe have an accountability partner. A lot of us do need external accountability. So um, figure out what you're going to need to make it happen. And so really figuring out that schedule. And I think, you know, we recommend, so if you're doing, so strength training is the cornerstone, uh, two to three days a week no more than four days a week. It's really hard to recover from more than that. And everybody's different as far as what they can recover from. So you do need to listen to your body. How much sleep are you getting? You know, are you feeling really sore or are you recovering and are you able to lift more weight the next time you do the program? If not, you're probably not recovering enough. So, um, so it could be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday strength training plan. And then maybe, you know, you could do one of the metabolic cardio workouts on maybe Saturday. So then you'd have a day off in between each workout, except for that Friday, Saturday, and then you'd have Sunday off. Um, we, we usually say you can do two days in a row, but don't do three days in a row. So, you know, if you're like Monday, Tuesday, you're going to work out, you're going to want to take Wednesday off to give your body a rest. Now that off could be you're walking or you're doing some active recovery. Um, but you know, that's not, you're not going to be hitting a lifting session or really pushing your body. You're going to let your body rest, recover so that you're ready to go again on Thursday. So just be careful. You know, a lot of people when they are excited and they, you know, first getting started, they're like, I'm going to work out every single day. And uh, I think that's the main thing is start slower. It's better to start with less and build up than it is to go too much and then end up hurting yourself. And then you're out of commission and you don't get to follow through with the plan. So I'll mention your book name again, Age Strong, A Woman's Guide to Feeling Athletic and Fit After 40. I will link in the show notes where you can purchase it online as well as your website. And thank you so much for joining me today. Do you have any last remarks you'd like to add? 
Uh, no, I just, you know, want to encourage women to start strength training. Don't be afraid, you know, start to um, pick up the book, follow the program, read the stories, get inspired. I'd love to connect with you on Instagram, rachelcrosgrove.co, and uh, let me know how it goes. Well, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs>